uh, for the, the relay feedback, uh, for, in order to do this experiment, we we uh, set uh, two different uh, input values of which we wanted we wanted this to go between. So for, for this case, it was between 60 and 100 uh, percent input. And what would happen? It would start out at a certain input, and it would give a, an output. We would put we had a, a set point, which is the green line here. Uh, had a set point, and once that output, the purple, or the uh, this right here, the uh, once this output reached that set point, the the input value would jump back down to the the other input value value we put in. So, uh, for instance, it, it, it went up to 100% input. Uh, the output gets up to the set point, and the moment that it reaches that set point, the out, the input jumps down to 60%, and it begins to cycle. So, uh, and, and what we did, I, I ran uh, multiple experiments until uh, the set point was uh, close to the middle of. Uh, I think this is dying on. Okay. All right. I got you. Okay. Uh, I, I did multiple experiments until the set point was close to the middle of, of this output, uh, of, of the output uh, uh, here, and made it look like a uh, sign graph. Uh, there, there's three main parameters that we needed uh, from this relay response. Uh, that is the, the delta M, which the delta M is the difference uh, between the two input values that we have. Uh, the, the delta C, which is the difference between the, the output, the, the highest value of the output versus the lowest, the lowest value of the output, and, and the period, which is uh, from uh, one end of the, uh, where the input value changes back to that same point uh, in, that, in the cycle. Um, once we had those values, we, we used these, these formulas in order to uh, compute the different different parameters. Uh, the KCU, for instance, was uh, 4 times delta M divided by uh, delta C times pi. Uh, the FU, Dr. Henry, was uh, 1 over the period. Uh, omega, uh, the omega U was uh, 2 pi over the period. The uh, C was uh, 10 raised to the log base 10. Uh, uh, T naught over tau, and uh, uh, we we also use this formula in order to find uh, T naught, uh, or in order to find tau, and then uh, once we found tau, we could use this equation to find T naught, and then uh, we could use all all what we found to find the K value. Um, these are uh, results, minor grass results from the. Relay response. Uh, our, our, K, my, our Brad's K was uh, 0.24. Uh, the FU for Brad's experiment was 0.54 uh, hertz. Uh, the T naught was 0.49 uh, seconds, and his tau was uh, 1.9 seconds. Uh, for my experiment, the K was 0.11. Uh, the FU was uh, 1.3. Uh, T naught was 0.44 and the tau was uh, 1.35. Uh, we took these values and compared them to the sinusoidal uh, uh, the sinusoidal values that we found, as well as compared them with the uh, FOPDT values. Uh, in this, the the case the user uh, really really large, so it made everything else uh, look really small in this graph. But um, the case the user very different from each other. Uh, there doesn't seem like there's any kind of pattern between them. Uh, and they don't they don't match up very well. So uh, in order to look at the other ones, we honed in on the graph a little bit uh, so that we could see these the smaller values a little bit better. Um, between the, the relay and the sign and the FOPDT, uh, none of the values really match uh, very well. Uh, I think for the sign we ended up just getting totally different values than what we uh, what we had found in the FOPDT. Um, but so. uh, in conclusion, we now know what the what the T naught, the tau, and the K values are. Uh, 
we, we also have the T-naught and tau uh, from the frequency response using uh, the point A are very inaccurate. Uh, the FOPDT parameters taken uh, from the graphical model fit uh, for frequency response are close to the FOPDT parameters uh, from week five. And the relay and frequency response uh, have close uh, KCU and K values, uh, but not tau, or T naught and tau values. Thank you.